Hello, and welcome to Kyber Shards, a 5th edition actual play show set in the Eberron campaign world. It is Friday, so we are down for another KSA, and we have Colin with us. It me. As you can see. Here I are. Buddy. How we doing, man? Uh, good. This is one of those weird KSAs, because we recorded last night, and it was like three episodes of roleplay. So, Substantial uh, roleplay. Yeah. So, um... It will be interesting to try and answer these questions um, without referring to last night. Yeah, I really should have spent the time this morning rewatching the last episode. But, <laughs> but here we go. Let's find out. <laughs> Indeed. Um, we have a few questions from Laura. Uh, and Laura would just like to know, why is Pog so eager to murder Jonas? He's been fine killing in the past, but usually not someone who hasn't done anything to the group or others Pog cared about. Like, I know he doesn't want him coming back, but murder seems an extreme leap. What up, buddy? I don't I don't think it's that he's eager to murder. Sorry, Alexa really wants to chime in right now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's that he's eager. This was this was a big moment in what Pog has expressed frustration about before. If there is a inevitable conclusion, why do we spend so much time screwing around and not doing the inevitable conclusion? Mm -hmm. And the fact that Sel Shadra said essentially in her veiledness, he's got to go. And it was murder. And then Thora didn't say that was bad. Right. There's there's a big thing here. If we stick on this X-Men analogy, which this whole thing is is based on, it's that I am very much the character lacking the moral compass. Mm -hmm. And and you know this of me. I love the gambit approach. Mm -hmm. I come from a life of doing what needs to be done, so tell me what's the right way. And Pog has never had the distinction in this experience with the strike force between killing and murder. Right. Um, and so if Thora says to do something, which is how Pog interpreted Thora, to be clear, did not, but that is Pog's brain, then it's killing. It's not murder. Um, right. And, and it's frustrating that it seems like the strike force said it's what we got to do except for Ari mm -hmm. for some reason. Um, and Ari to be fair has, has played on the, the moral path of all the other characters, but not on, on pogs in our, our experience here. He's not pled to his humanity or tried to, to convince him in any of these conversations. And so as far as pogs concerned, this is what Miss Thora wants us to do. And you're the reason that we're working for Miss Thora like this. And so let's just do it. Um, also coming off of the frustration of the conversation of Dane is a person who's out and doing things. Mm -hmm. this, you know, maybe, maybe this is when we're getting extreme and doing things uh, really blurs a lot of lines, which that's a very hard question to answer after, after getting to where we are. But Speaking to Pog as you know him at this moment, that's that's why is the people he has trusted to be his moral compass while he develops his own mm -hmm. uh, or more importantly, the person. Since there's been that divide between he and Ari. Um, that's, that's what he's leaned on. Uh, Mia asks a related question. Um, I was very interested in your choice to have Pog pull Malcolm aside and talk to him about killing Jonas. What was your thought process behind that? Um, Pog didn't sleep uh, while we were at the ship's cat. Pog laid and thought. And, and it felt like he was supposed to kill Jonas. And it felt like that's why Ari left the pantry, is that I, I was supposed to kill Jonas. But... When it came down to it, and especially in the moment of dragging him back into the hold on the ship, it got it got very real. And mm -hmm. as a player, I really wrestled because as a player, I was like, I'm going to kill Jonas back here. Like, I'm I'm going to 
slide a knife in his neck and and I'm going to kill him and leave a corpse either for Sam to eat or for Malcolm to discover. Um, and as a player, that was very compelling and that sounded really, really cool. And then as I was in the headspace of Pog, it became that moral question mm-hmm. of this man is unconscious. This, this man is laying here. Can I, can I stop him from, from living? And pulling aside Malcolm was because I don't, I genuinely don't think that Pog understands that Malcolm dislikes him because mm-hmm. Pog hasn't intended to cross any lines or not even intended to be a smart aleck with Malcolm. He's just been Pog, which in the circumstances the group has found Malcolm in has just been cherry on top. But Malcolm is a dude who lives in this world of piracy, yeah. this, this world of questionable ethics as a trade. And Pog needed to be told it was okay mm-hmm. by somebody. Um, and, and he called Malcolm because this would be the person that he could potentially have, would potentially have the secret with of we we did the thing that that had to be done right um and that that didn't make sense to call for shade because shade is okay with anything that's living not being any longer (laughs) um uh, Ezri would probably have wanted to do something weird with the corpse. And that's not in a, that's not in a disrespectful way. In, in maybe he's the guy who would want to take something for evidence or, you right. know, I, I don't know, but he's, he's defiled more corpses than he has left <laughs> just laying peacefully. And Ari wasn't saying no anymore, but wouldn't say yes. Right. So call over the pirate. Sure. And and the question was, how do you feel about killing him? Should we just should we just do this? Um, you have a morally gray question. You ask a morally gray person, right? So sure. Um, and it is a person that that Pog looks up. I mean, Malcolm's cool. This is Colin. Malcolm is cool. It's true. And you know, he's brave. He's daring. He's also loyal to his own extent. I mean, Malcolm went through some stuff that I, as a player, was like, yeah, we're, he's turning the ship around. He's not going to do this. But he paid his debt. He, he saw a job through because he put his name on it. And there's an honor to that, that Pog, as, a, as an adventurer, as a, a person surrounded by gangs and mercenaries, would appreciate that, mm-hmm. that sense of honor. And so, yeah, that's... Uh, that's why he pulled Malcolm. Thanks for asking, Mia. That's why. You really uh, wanted to kill something. Laura asks, somewhat pleadingly, perhaps, what can the party do to get back on Malcolm's good side? That's a good question. I, I don't have the answer. What if we dropped off a litter of puppies? <laughs> How would Malcolm feel about that? Would um, he just feed them to Sam? No, no, Malcolm wouldn't be. Oh, man, dude. No. I've got to make him less cool if we're never going to get to see him again. <laughs> so, I mean, Malcolm's reaction to the group. So, usually in most in most RPG rule books, and I don't usually apply a lot of, like, specific rules to social encounters because uh, I prefer to let the role play speak for itself. Mm. But broadly speaking tend to categorize a NPC's act attitude towards the party on more or less a five point scale with uh, with five being actively friendly, allied, has your back, and one being openly hostile. Um, most NPCs start out at a three. They're they're neutral. They don't have anything against or for the NPC, the, the player characters and it's the player character's job to get them there. Um, Malcolm arguably started off a little, you know, like a four because you guys had Thora's name, um, attached to this and he owed Thora. And so he started out inclined to help you. He was helpful, I guess would be the, um, the term, uh, and over the course of the adventure, 
sometimes because of things the party did and sometimes because of things that happened around the party uh malcolm gradually slid back way down and at the beginning of this conversation malcolm was at a what malcolm was hostile Mm -hmm. to the party malcolm wants nothing to do with the party uh the only reason a conversation was possible was the chest of cash (laughs) Uh, that'll win you an audience most places yes like uh an npc for me an npc that is hostile if you engage an npc that is hostile either they're an enemy and there's going to be a fight or they just can't stand you and there's going to be nothing but as you say malcolm is a pirate uh malcolm's a smuggler and you guys had a very very well paying job so sure have the conversation but because he was hostile he was inclined to hear everything that the pcs said said in the least charitable light possible yeah And so some of the things with the player characters that were just just them being their own socially awkward selves came through the lens of these people are the worst. So, you know, it wasn't for him, Pog, seeking advice on whether it was okay to kill this guy. It was... All right, so I dragged you all the way up here. I've offered you a bunch of cash. Now, I just don't want to have the blood on my hands. Would you, by chance, be okay if we just turned your ship into the crime into a crime scene? Would that be right. um, would that be cool with you? Like that, or you know, Esri's Esri's thing, which definitely I think to Esri was just a hey, you really understand. It's very important to us that he not come back. If he comes back, it's all gonna gonna blow up in our faces. But Malcolm hears you better not bring him back or else or else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so real. And Ari was just too exhausted to try, I guess by that point at, at smoothing social corners. Um, and so not much attempt was made to, win Malcolm back over in this encounter. And because of the way this encounter went, I would say it would be, I I mean, I don't know what the thing is the party could do to get back in Malcolm's good graces. Um, It's just really hard to imagine a scenario. It's conceivable to imagine a scenario where Malcolm is fine being paid to do something minimally dangerous by the party. It is very hard to imagine Malcolm welcoming the party onto his ship ever again. Yeah. And that's, that's fair. That's one of the challenges to playing this kind of a character for me is in that interaction when the whole party was there before Pog drug Jonas away, like, Colin would love to have this conversation because I can totally (laughs) see where you're coming from. Like we can, we can rationalize, but Pog, I mean, the dude, he's a 10 charisma and an eight intelligence. He does not know he's done anything wrong or misspoken in any way. Right. Like he always thinks his communication is clear. And when he, when he's not positive, he's going to let someone else talk. (laughs) So like this, this is a real challenging scenario for me. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Um, but there it is. Uh, okay. Um, more questions. Emily. I am inquires of both of us. Uh, how do you feel about true names as a fantasy concept? What piece of fantasy media do you think did it best? <laughs> I'm going to big steal. rebel Stiltskin fan. Uh, I'm glad you went that way because I'm stealing Earthsea from you <laughs> because uh, Ursula K. Le Guin is my experience with true names. Uh, mm-hmm. We did we did our episode over Earthsea and that was the introduction to the idea of true names for me. And I thought it was fascinating. Mm-hmm. What a. What a cool and valid concept, the, the idea that that truly knowing someone gives you power over them Mm -hmm. is such a a wonderful analogy for 
for human intimacy. Like it's such, yeah, such a great analogy. I I've only encountered it uh, between Rumpelstiltskin and Earthsea, uh, and so my limited knowledge. I've really enjoyed it, and I like. I like that idea being introduced specifically for Esri. I think that's a fun, a fun challenge for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm also most familiar with it from Earthsea, which I, I think is really the the main modern fantasy usage of it. In D and D, I'm most inclined to play around with it, um, with Fey, uh, mm. like as a as a Fey concept. Um, you know, again, I guess it kind of ties back into the idea of Rumpelstiltskin. Uh, you know, if you were going to run a D and D campaign with the assumption that true names were important, then it would probably be most fair to tell the players ahead of time uh, so that they could decide whether they share their true name. And we could talk about how do you get your true name versus your by name? Uh, Cause you know, in, in Earthsea, um, Sparrowhawk Ged has the name Sparrowhawk before he has the name Ged. Like he has his given usage name. And then in his sort of coming of age ceremony, a wizard tells him, his his true name and so it's a lot more mystical in earthsea where you have a true name it requires someone with magic to know your true name it mm -hmm. isn't just your parents named you uh and so what i enjoy playing around with in D, D is that there are some creatures that operate on the rules of true names uh and they don't necessarily know whether or not other characters other other creatures in the world operate under the rules of true names um so th that's kind of kind of what i like about it with D, D. but yeah no, i i think it's a really fun um fun notion and certainly i would say earthsea does it best yeah i think it was also a very fun and surprising addition from you in that 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 encounter uh I was so very jealous that I hadn't decided to go with Ezri. <laughs> I don't know what Pog would have done in there, but absolutely would have just been like, oh, Pog Harad. And it's just like <laughs> told. And I think it's so fun to lean into us having not been warned about true names. Yeah. To to go see see what consequences are. <laughs> let's let's learn, huh? Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. Well, I mean, that shop was purely out of nothing like i i was not let's talk about that huh because that's <laughs> the most recent one am i wrong didn't everyone yeah. just meet yeah Abra everyone Apothecary? just went to Abra Apothecary. uh what okay okay listen you and i have done theater for years together we've improved a lot but where <laughs> where <laughs> does Abra Apothecary come from that was so delightful i just sat here like how is he doing this? <laughs> Philip's a different person when we play D and D and I like this guy so much too. Um, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I was put on the spot to make up a, a magic shop. And so I, honestly, where it started was, okay, we're in the marketplace, but the giant skyscraper that dominates the center of the marketplace just fell on the marketplace. Um, so there's a shop that's still open and there's only a shop that's still open because Esri, I think, rolled a natural 20 to create <laughs> a shop that's still that's still open and sells a very high level spell scroll that doesn't have any legitimate uses. Right. Like there's no standard legal uses for <laughs> modify memory. Um, there are perhaps some like using it on yourself usages eternal sunshine style right <laughs> but there's there's no legally legitimate reason to use it on someone else so it needs to be so that, so it shouldn't be here like there's no reason that someone in storm should be selling this but as we rolls crazy high um i can't remember i think it was a natural 20 to find it but i but he rolls crazy high and so it has to be there um just from the way that I tend to play. It needs to be there. Uh, because I asked for the role. The role went well. So it was here. You reward um, good roles. <laughs> so it has to be there. And there has to be a shop that's intact and open and sells it. And the odds of that are extremely low. Uh, of all of those things being true. So it needed to be weird. 
Like the shop needed to be something weird. Um, I like it when shops have goofy names Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes because there's lots of shops like that, you know, especially in a world that's not primarily dominated by chains. I mean, it has the mega corpse, but, but franchise chains is not the main thing in, in Eberron. <laughs> no TGI um, Fridays. Got it. Um, well, it's called the, it's called the golden dragon or something. It's house Galanda. They run a, a, an inn and cafe. That's like the McDonald's or the Applebee's of Eberron. <laughs> I don't want to go to the um, golden dragon alone. <laughs> Uh, so it needed to be something really weird. And so I decided, okay, there's this shop and it's remarkably entirely intact and it must be remarkably entirely intact because it's run by someone very strange. Well, um, and so we get Avelina and Vivian. Um, and I just wanted to do everything I could to make the shop feel weird. So, you know, Vivian goes out one door and then reappears back through another one. There's sort of the suggestion of this giant back room with all sorts <laughs> of weird things in it. Um, I want to go to there. <laughs> maybe out. Av- maybe Avelina's a witch or maybe Avelina wears a witch hat because that's what's expected <laughs> of a of an apothecary. I love that so like, much. It's like putting on a Dottore mask because you have to sell medicine. <laughs> what exactly is what exactly is Vivian? Um, <laughs> so many questions. Uh, part honestly, it, it was part of it was I was back and forth between who ran this shop still when Esri walked into the shop, I was making the shop up as the conversation is moving us into the shop. And my Im- immediate thought was, Oh, it'd be really funny if we have like a troll apothecary. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was like, ah, no, what else? And I was going back and forth on, I had the picture of Vivian in my head and the picture of Avelina in my head. I was going back and forth on which one I was, I wanted to run the shop and then just sort of, <laughs> why not both <laughs> why not both are they the same person are there two people in the shop are there more people in the shop what's up with the cat in the back of the room like i love it i love it so much yeah uh and so i needed there to be something weird about it i knew Ezri didn't have anywhere near enough money to buy this spell scroll even at a very at the extremely generous price that i offered it um and so what could Ezri do to get the spell scroll? Ezri starts trying to negotiate to get the deal. And so, well, I've put a witch's hat on her. So obviously she wants a lock of his hair or, or mm-hmm. some fingernail shavings or something. I was definitely expecting a cup of blood. <laughs> Cause Ezri would have just done that. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, the offer of a deal is always appealing to me um, when when Esri suggests he could make things for make potions for her. Um, and the joke about, you know, your firstborn. So like it just it, it just rolled out everything I could think of about witches in fantasy. Um, let's just lean hard into it. Like when I'm put on a spot. I find a character concept and just lean all the way into it uh, with with who the person is. And so Avelina was just the witchiest of witches that I could think of. I adored it. I know you're not the Stephen King reader, but right. you accidentally created Needful Things, which is a store that's essentially run by Satan. Uh, it has everything you want. But... To take the thing that you want, you're going to owe a price. I'll tell you later what the price is. And I was like, oh, Esri, you just walked into <laughs> to witchy. I love Lucy needful things. This is <laughs> this is terrifying. And I love it. Sign up for all of it because let's see what happens. <laughs> um, I felt bad, like uh, R.A. was saying in the watch party that you felt bad for uh, for wasting these these NPCs. <laughs> I don't know if these NPCs would have ever existed if you hadn't walked into that store. <laughs> so that's true. That's true. All from a uh, sense of regret for misspeaking. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. So that's that's Abracapothecary. I adore it. 
It was fun. Um, there were a couple other questions about the Abrac Apothecary encounter. One from Mia. I was also curious as to why Pog was more thoughtful about giving Ezri his money, when in the past he has had no problem giving his money and dragon shards away. What's changed? It's Ezri. And Ezri gets weird about money and value. Um, there's a twofold pause when he asked for this money. Um, Pog is not going to forget the fact that he has had to hide something from the safety of his own room mm -hmm. because Ezri got weird about its value. I mean, he turned into full-blown Gollum at the thought of a bag of dragon shards. And so, like, that's why, that's why Pog and the, the Ocelot are so close is because he, he was friendly with the Ocelot and he got to hide it in its little lair and hide his dragon shards because... Ezri knew there was something valuable and just wanted it. Just want, want to have it to use it. If we need to use it, I want to have it. Um, and when Ezri needs money for things, and this isn't a knock on, on the player choice by any means, but from the character standpoint, when Ezri needs something money-wise, it's usually for him. And, and Pog has not yet paid Salarka for the axe i mean she got the dragon shards but like you know now he's lost something hugely valuable and has had to replace it and all of a sudden there has been very recently because this haven't i only had the axe for like <laughs> three <Yep>. days <laughs> mm -hmm. so so there has been very recently a need to have finances um and also Pog is not happy at the idea of spending money on this spell mm -hmm. because we've just spoken that Pog is an eight intelligence, but he's the one in the pantry that said, why are we using names? Mm -hmm. Why, why are you saying her name? Because Selshadra never said what she really meant to say. So why are we really saying who she is right. to this person that we're not killing that we're supposed to kill? And so in, in Pog's mind, what Ezri is looking for is an eraser for thoughtlessness. And, and that's, that's not a good reason to go spending every dime that we have. Mm -hmm. um, but, but Ezri really wants it. Ezri feels very convicted. That's why it was a pause and not a denial. Because right. Pog doesn't like this. This is this is not a good use of money, um, but you're not buying a PlayStation five. You're buying something that you think is is important and is going to provide you with peace of mind. And so out of the love he has for Ezri, he, he gives him the money. Mm -hmm. He does pause because you're weird about money. You wanted to sell health potions that have literally saved all of our lives. You wanted my dragon shards and now you want to buy this thing that only helps if we're dumb. Okay. What, take my card. Here you go. Um, and so that's, that's why it was a pause, but not a denial. I'm, I really appreciate that you picked up on that Mia because it was, it was a hesitation um, mm -hmm. and denying it was never uh, in the cards. It was always just like, ah, you and money, man. Like what, what is it? We got to get you a girl. We got to get you a guy. <laughs> We got to get you a bag of dirt. I don't know what he wants, but like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, related to the spell, Emily asks, uh, in the past, I can't remember Pog being concerned that Ari was magically messing with his brain, frustrated with potential mundane manipulation and being excluded from telepathy. Yes, but not concerned about brain magic, despite that being the main aspect of Ari's mark. This caused me to be a little surprised that he was so concerned about Ezri potentially erasing Pog's memories. Is there a reason why Pog was so concerned in this last episode? Uh, Ari just exploded with mental abilities and has almost been crippled by them. This is a great question, Emily. Um, has almost been crippled by them. And yeah, Pog has, has definitely been frustrated at the idea of being persuaded, mm. uh, having his mind changed for him in a forward direction. The idea of forgetting something 
against your will is is terrifying um especially coming off of that was the definitive horror of Ari's existence Mm -hmm. when the memory of Ari slapped back into Pog that was excruciatingly painful on a, on an emotional level. Like the person that I cared for disappeared from my, my psyche. And I don't, I don't like us having that ability. I don't like that ability existing. I think it's one of the most terrifying spells in the game. Uh, it's that horrifying. and uh, feeble mind, which basically just drops a creature's intelligence score to one or something crazy like that. Oh, like it just takes away their ability to think. Oh, that's like that's horrifying. Like, OK, uh, I don't know. What are we? We're, we're, we're a couple of weeks out. I can say something that's a, that's a guardi- minor Guardians of the Galaxy or three spoiler here. Um, <clears throat> if you don't want that mute and i'll wave when it's safe i'm just kidding (laughs) no it's not a big one mantis does this to drax in guardians of the galaxy 3 Mm. like there's a conversation where she calls him stupid uh very bluntly and drax looks at the end of it hurt like you think i'm stupid and she goes yes and then realizes she's hurt him and puts her hand on him and goes forget and Drax starts the cult, the whole scene over. That's terrifying. And it's never it's never dealt with. That's terrorism. It's just a joke in the movie. It's never dealt with. And I'm like, That's oh, horrifying. my gosh, she just modified memory on him. And it's like and we're cool with it. I what? hate it. I hate yeah. it. Anyway, it's it's so bad. Yes, that spell is horrifying. Anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. that that's spell why, is the worst. Yeah, that's why it's it's the idea of. Pog is becoming more strong minded in the idea of having that be crippled. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, I'll do violence. I'll do violence to your face as you're, as you're watching, but it's, it's a whole nother world to alter who you are. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's, there's real serious implications to losing your memory. Uh, I mean, man, I, you pick any one random line of memories, one event and the chain of things that happened from it. And I don't know who I am today. Yeah. Because all of those factor in and we're playing characters from a history of great trauma. Yeah. And in the surface, you'd think, oh, it'd be great to forget that like Pog killed his mother. (sighs) However, Mm. why am I here? Yeah. Black wheel. Like what? Why, why am I being trained as a soldier? And also, why do I have a mark? And any one thing uh, being taken from you is, is horrifying. Mm-hmm. And that was a reality that, that only existed with the power of someone from the Feywild, like the Forgotten Prince, which is, you know, a curse. Yeah. And now we're talking about just being able to, like, do it. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-mm. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'd yeah. rather kill the person. Yeah. To their face. <laughs> uh, slightly l- less heavy question from Emily. Now that Pog has fought the Saugan, mm. is he more or less or roughly the same amount scared as opposed to four episodes ago? <laughs> um, less and the same at the same time. Mm-hmm. Less scared because they die real easy for Pog. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm sure there was some saving grace from Philip in allowing us to to I, uh, I gave you base level P- Sawagan. Right. And so like the idea being, yeah, OK, I can I can kill several of these. I can kill mm-hmm. two of them with one attack turn. Yeah. Um, OK, OK, OK. They're not worse than humans. Right. But they ugly and they're <laughs> gross and the and. Yo, they ate their friends like that's super, super gross. I'm against it. And so so less scared, uh, maybe more grossed out by them. I don't <laughs> want to do this again. Like I'd rather fight anything else that we fought. I'd rather fight another giant sentient tree from the Feywild than, than to have to fight more of these guys. <laughs> thanks phil pog's next major arc is taking place underwater <laughs> he can't breathe 
Oh, man. Uh, see, that's one area where you are safe because running an encounter underwater is so, so tiresome and hard. Yeah. Like the the rules for underwater movement and underwater combat are so convoluted and it just I, I don't like underwater combat. It's so annoying. As the guy who can only set stuff on fire. Right. I don't know what to do, man. <laughs> Cast fire. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the axe and it just. Uh, our last question comes from mm-hmm. Savage Artificer. Uh, Colin, I love your development of Pog. He started off pretty reserved, letting the better talkers, quote unquote, talk, take the lead. But he seems to have decided he is tired of others making bad decisions for him. Mm-hmm. He wants to make his own bad decisions. No. Yep, uh, it's true. The progressions. Uh, how the progression has felt so natural and so natural throughout. Do you have an idea of where you want Pog's story to go, or are you just rolling with the punches? Um, Savage, thank you for watching. Uh, we appreciate you having having joined in and caught up so quickly. Uh, thank you for the kind words. The progression was natural because uh, it was an intentional choice from the player who felt very insecure about sitting at a table uh, with great and experienced players. Um, there was a lot of calling in, I'll let the better players be the better talkers. Um, mm-hmm. As I found my footing in my own comfort. Um, role-playing is not the same as improv, um, which I naively thought going into this. And so I was like, yeah, I can absolutely, I can improv. And then I have way more fun in meaningful interactions. And that took me a while to, to build up to. Um, so it was very intentional on, on the pog side. Do I, do I have an idea of where I want Pog's story to go? Yeah. I keep giving these, these contradictory answers. Yes. And also no, because Right now, I don't, obviously, I don't know where Philip is going to take the campaign, but I don't know where Philip is going to take Pog because, mm-hmm. because we've left so much of the mystery of his ancestry, a mystery to me, the player. Um, I, don't, I don't know what's next. So I can imagine the kind of person I want Pog to be at the end. Um, but I don't know. I'll be honest. I don't know what Pog's story is. Um, right now. And I say this with zero problem having this. I feel like Pog is the supporting character mm. in, in the cast. Um, and that's, that's fine. I'm having a blast with him and his role and my role in this. Uh, Pog is very much along for the adventures because he is finding himself. Um, and the direction is given by the silver flame was to bring light, do good. And that is a, a very pointed direction with absolutely no direction. Hmm. When you encounter a situation, do the right thing, right? Not go take care of this bad thing it's be good yeah be good um and so so that's all i can think about right now and there's there's no spoiler here because it didn't happen there was deep thought from me about taking him to the church in these last couple episodes that we played and there were some opportunities for it but i also knew that the role play was going to continue into other scenes uh, and so I didn't make the decision to go there. Um, but there's there's a sense of Pog is very lost right now. And, and just being good has come into question. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so it's, it's interesting that you ask this. I'm very excited for you to get to watch the next episode because the question that, that you just asked uh, leads, leads into where Pog is on this next episode. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how else 
That's the best I can muster, to be completely honest with you. I know where I'd like to see him go, how he's going to get to become that person. I don't have any idea, and I don't know if becoming that person is actually an option. Yeah. Yeah. I'm having a lot of fun learning him, though. Awesome. Uh, well, that is our last question. Thank you all so much for these questions. This is always so much fun. Uh, I adore this. Yes, it's it's so fun to get into the, the characters like this. Um, and uh, you can submit questions over on our Discord, um, the link to which is with all of our other stuff down below. Uh, you'll also find a link to Colin's Twitch, where he's sorry, BTR. The O is a zero. And you can also see Colin on his YouTube channel, The Geek, The Game Pass Guru. There we are. Uh, there are too many G's. Why has everyone got G's? Don't uh, worry, I'm changing it <coughs> for the next channel. Game Pass Guru, uh, where you can see Colin playing around with the library that is available on the Game Pass and reviewing it. And new episodes of Kyber Shards drop every Monday. New Kyber Shards answers every Friday. And until next time, thanks for rolling with us.